Okay, hello everyone. Welcome along to Agile NZ TV Live. I'm joined by Lisa Atkins here, who did a keynote earlier today. How are you doing, Lisa? I'm doing great, thanks. Yeah, your keynote went well. I thought so. Yeah. Uh, people are saying it was useful, and that's the best. That's uh, that's a good sign. That's the best you can get. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So, I mean, as someone who's done an awful lot of coaching of an awful lot of people in yeah. in sort of changing the agile mindset, what is it that you find is the biggest challenge to getting people on board with that way of thinking? Well, agile threatens everyone's sense of personal value at some point. Yeah. Yeah, it really does because we were taught certain things about how our careers are supposed to go and how how we work our roles and how we climb the corporate ladder. And then all of a sudden, Agile comes in, for example, for a tester and says, oh, no, 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 you're not going to wait for things to come to you at the end. You're now moving from being a testing workforce to being a quality consultant. Whoa. Big change. Huge change, right? So, and, you know, managers, um, you're not going to be controlling milestones anymore and trying to line things up. Your job now is to create collaborative leaders. Yep. It's almost like two different people. Yeah. Only, only this transformation has to happen inside one body, and more importantly, inside one mind, one heart. Yeah. And so, um, there's a lot of stuff that can help people help other people shift, right. and specifically around professional coaching. And there's this uh, theory called edge theory that we teach in our classes about how people move across the edge from something that is very familiar to them to something that feels kind of scary and is emerging, but actually is kind of exciting too. Yeah. And then how something happens, and they jump back over the edge, <laughs> and then they and then they go over, and it's a zigzag, zigzag, back you know, and back yeah. and forth. Yeah, and that's really normal. Um, and so it's a it's a longer term process to help people change, but it's totally possible because I did. Yeah. I mean, I went from um, a command and control project manager manipulating everyone and everything so that I could get you know the job done, whatever I thought that meant. Yeah. Um, to someone who could really actually see the beauty in each person and figure out how to draw that out without forcing my way. And it's, it's, so it's totally possible. Yeah. Um, and it takes some skill. Absolutely, yeah. I think yeah. coaching is a really undervalued uh, skill, I guess, in, in a lot of software development and what we do. Yeah, well, and it's just one of eight knowledge areas and skills that agile coaches need to do the yeah. job really well, but it's the one that's kind of underrepresented. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Um, so in your talk, you kind of touch on four fundamental perspectives of approaching that shift in the mindset. Can you sort of, for those who weren't able to attend, tell us a little yeah. bit about what those are? Yeah. Well, okay, so those four perspectives are more like ways that we look at anything, whether it's a team or an organization yep. or even a person, right? Um, it's the I quadrant, which is about, um, at the team level, it's about individuals' mindsets and where they are with the Agile change, exactly what you just asked me about, yeah. right? In the it quadrant, it's about healthy practices and roles so that we can deliver great products, yeah. right? So more about the nuts and bolts of getting things done, things that you could check yeah. off of a list, we're doing that, yeah. we're not, the roles are healthy, almost. the roles are not. Yeah. Um, so the, those are the two windows. Now, there's also the we window, which on a team, what we're looking for there is the team's culture and the strength of their relationships. How well are, are they able to collaborate and to navigate conflict and change? So those are things I'm looking for there. Yeah. And over the final window is called ITS, I-T-S, ITS, nice. which are the systems. And when we look at a team, we think about what's the environment surrounding the team? Like what are the big corporate processes, systems, structures yeah. that either enable the team's healthy product flow, smooth, beautiful product flow, or Hopefully. disable it, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or act as a detractor to it. And then really, what can someone who's coaching agile teams do in each of those quadrants to increase health? Right. So that's where really I focus. Now, what we talked about this morning in the keynote was that same model, but applied at the enterprise, enterprise level. Right. Right? Because you can look at anything for that model. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah, and that model is called integral agile. Cool. So anyone who's interested, look up Integral Agile Model and, and yeah, read yeah. about it. Yeah, and if you really want to know that the basis beneath it, you would look up Integral Theory, because it comes to us from outside the Agile world. It just happens to be really useful inside our world. Awesome. So, I mean, also, we're, we're here in New Zealand. Uh, are. How are you enjoying New Zealand so far? You know, I've traveled around New Zealand quite a bit. Last yeah? time I was here, my family and I spent four weeks traveling the South Island. Oh, no, the South Island is very beautiful. Oh, phenomenal. Yeah. My daughter yeah. and I spent some time on the North Island. Um, and... I got reminded again this time of the impression I was left with last time, and it's even more palpable this time. I, I can't quite put words to it, but there is something really important happening here with human evolution. Right. I mean, I think it's possible that the way New Zealanders think and their, their ability to influence the systems around them could actually 
create a, a hallmark or an example for the yeah. rest of the world. And I told our students um, at the end of the class in Auckland, I said, I'm not sure what it is, I can't really articulate it any better than that, but all I know is I want to be part of helping it emerge. Right. And they said, move to New Zealand! <laughs> well, the easy solution right there, yeah, there you right. go. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Well, we're in the middle of making a commitment to come back to New Zealand every Excellent. year, probably every August. Awesome. Um, and bringing our classes, bringing um, consulting work, with, uh, working with groups of Agile coaches and, and people who want to create coaching offices or coaching capabilities within their organizations. So that feels really important to me, to be yeah. part of this. Nice. I mean, that sounds really cool. Yeah. Uh, I guess one final question. Uh, New Zealand is also kind of famous for some of its sports teams, the All Blacks in particular. Yes, I think you got a scarf earlier, did you? I get, did. You did get a I scarf did. earlier. Is there anything that you think you could take from the, the world of sports coaching and apply in an agile environment, in an agile coaching environment? You know, I have a friend back home in Richmond, Virginia, who is on a women's rugby team. Right. And she has been having this vision and, and getting a bunch of footage of her rugby team for years now because she keeps saying, Rugby is so much like Scrum in particular. Yeah. It's so much like it. So There's just, a terminology there yeah, as so well. Just, well. Yeah, exactly. So just like on a, on, a, on a service level or a process level, it's, it's very consistent. Now, sports coaches um, are a lot like um, agile coaches because they have content authority. They, I mean, they, they know how rugby is played, yeah. right? And they can teach you how to do this and do it just like this until you get really good at this and then you can find your own way, right? So that's the same thing that Agile coaches do when they're in more of a mentoring skill set, Yeah. right? Um, and I think a lot of sports coaches, I don't know if this is true. If yours here, you got to check it out. <laughs> but we'll speculate, yeah. But I think, you know, I, know, I know of a lot of sports coaches like Phil Jackson in the U.S., who's a basketball coach and others, have found that at some point, telling people how to do stuff isn't what's going to get them over the line to being a great, um, to being a great player. Right. What helps them be a great player is the it's inner the mentality, game. mentality, yeah, yeah. Right. And so that's, what are we back to? We're back to that the mindset. mindset shift, yeah. Right? And so those coaches have picked up professional coaching skills, which allow them to really help people with that mindset shift to whatever it is that's blocking them from being the, like, the most amazing player they could be. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, to the extent that sports coaches are using like a full breadth of mentoring and professional coaching skills, yeah, I think so it's like a, a, yeah. an amazing kind of analogy. Awesome. Well, look, Lisa, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for talking to us. You're welcome. And enjoy the rest of the conference and your Thanks. time in New Zealand. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.